Hey, good morning everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Gardening with George. If you saw my Instagram post this morning, you know that we have a new addition. So uh, I'm not going to change the name. It's still going to be Gardening with George, but we also have Rosie now too who loves to garden. You've probably seen her on my Instagram. She loves to eat things in the garden um, and they've just been able to play with each other. We've had her for about two months now and it was a very very slow introduction rosie has some things we're working on she came from the county shelter with some fear problems and uh, they've just been able to start playing with each other without muzzles on so you'll probably hear them in the background i promise you will see them both so rosie is the german shepherd which is the traditional black and tan and bear is the czech shepherd so he's the one that's very dark he's a little chunky that's all right he just eats good around here um don't tell him i said that so if you want to know the difference between the two of them just look for the larger one that's george all right so i've been working a ton in the garden i've been wanting to do a video and i keep saying nope i'm gonna do a little bit more before i do a video and if i keep doing that i'm never gonna do a video so it is may 12th i think maybe 13th i don't know uh it is gorgeous right now it is 63 degrees out i'm a little bit east of tampa and it is just gorgeous weather out here this morning it will get hot <laughs> so that's why i'm doing the video this morning um and we'll start off uh just doing the tour and again you know there's some areas that are still a hot mess keep in mind i just started gardening a year ago almost exactly one year ago there was literally nothing back here but two trees one of the big trees was cut down and we just had the stump ground on that um so that was not in the last video we still had the big hole of the, the the trunk so that's new so we need some more mulch to be spread i'm gonna go order that probably next week uh probably about two more pallets of that um but otherwise the garden is is looking pretty good for what summer crops look like in florida there's not a ton that we can grow in as far as vegetables um in the summer it's just too hot like the brassicas they don't they don't like it everything bolts so uh let's get started Okay, back here is my butterfly garden. This is a Chinese lantern plant. And those balls, um, they have some kind of like milk substance in them. I'm not really sure what it is, but the butterflies absolutely love it. I had so many butterflies and caterpillars on it. And every time I come out here, I see butterflies on there. There's actually an Instagram video of me taking a uh, video of a butterfly that was just flapping in the wind. So a lot of the other stuff has come up a lot. I have a ton of volunteer uh, tropical milkweed. It's all over the yard. I have not pulled it. I heard that a lot of people are having problems getting milkweed. I haven't seen any caterpillars lately, uh, but I'm leaving it there. I see the, um, the butterflies on the milkweed all the time. So I'm just gonna leave it and see what happens, but it's all over my yard. The common milkweed, I guess is the number one preference uh, to gardeners that want to attract the caterpillars and the butterflies but this is tropical which like i said all was volunteer so um well i did plant some last year but i think i planted common last year so this is number two you know if you can't get common you get the tropical so anyhow that is big and bad in the back there uh some of the other stuff has come up i just planted some salvia in there yesterday i got a bunch of new things on wednesday at the nursery so i had to return one plant my pepper vine that died and uh, i came home with a car full of stuff so all right so that's about it in there i did plant some sunflowers but they didn't they didn't do well this area doesn't get a ton of light so it it is what it is um here we put up a fence we took down the wire and we put up a fence and we put a gutter on there to see how it would be i'm going to plant like some spinach and things like that in there they are still figuring out how to share toys so let's see hey. um so we they he has a frisbee and she wants the frisbee but she has that toy and she wants the frisbee so <laughs> sorry for the crumbling back there so anyway i'm gonna plant some spinach and things like that in the gutter and we have some more gutters that we're gonna hang along the fence i did my research about the pressure treated wood um they say it's not as dangerous as you 
think or as it used to be i wouldn't grow anything directly on it but they're going to be in the gutters and um you know not directly touching that pressure treated wood so i'm okay with that so in here i have potatoes we already harvested a bunch of potatoes on mother's day from here so i replanted some more potatoes and hopefully we'll get a big harvest from those i put one tomato plant back here because i wanted to see how it would be and um, it's actually growing really good in the grow bag so that might be something that i do in the future put some more in grow bags because i do like the way that that one's growing it looks really healthy and it's not getting a ton of sun back here it does get sun but not a ton of it um, sometimes the sun here is so strong that it burns the leaves on things so right here is a Barbados cherry and that's doing all right. Like I said, it's, I mean, it's green, it looks healthy. Um, it's just not growing a ton, but again, this is not a, you know, probably gets about six hours of sun over here versus the rest of the garden where it's just absolutely sun all day long. So over here, I have a, a loquat that I bought at the farmer's market, not this hot mess back here. It's just, this is my, you know, staking area for, uh, the dirt and everything, my compost and my soil and all my extra stuff. So I got this at the farmer's market for $10 and it looked like it was dead, but it had a little bit of new growth you could see right there. So I took my chance for a $10 low quat. All right, then we have some, oh, almost missed. This is some shampoo ginger. That's not doing anything since I bought it, but that's all right, we'll give it some time. Hey George, say hello George. That's George. Here's a fig that I got, pretty cheap. I think that was only about 10 bucks also. I don't remember where I got that one, but it was a local um, food stand. I just don't remember which one, a fruit stand somewhere. So my son got me this cart for Mother's Day, which has been very helpful because I don't have to level it the way that I do with the wheelbarrow. So I've used that quite a lot. I've got a lot of spontaneous sweet potatoes. They're not volunteers. We planted them, but we just randomly planted them all over the yard to see where they kind of do well and where they don't do well. I had this table out in the garage and I brought it out here because I wasn't using it there. So I don't care if it gets destroyed. It's going to get destroyed because we live in Florida. You can't put wood outside without it getting destroyed, even if it's treated. Um, so, you know, if I get two years out of it, I'll be happy. But these are all the plants that I bought the other day uh, when I did my three nursery stops. I got a Pakistani, uh, Pakistan mulberry. I got that at Home Depot. I think it was $35. Home Depot had a lot of really good deals the other day. I'll show you some of the other things that I got. But I wanted to add some color into the garden. I don't have a problem with pollinators. I have a ton of pollinators in my garden because I let a lot of stuff go to seed on purpose. But I saw a video the other day on Epic Gardening. I forget the woman's name. She works for them. Um, and Kevin did a tour with her and she had so much color in her garden. And I was very adamant that I wasn't going to add anything unless it was a producer. And since I had the pollinators, there really wasn't a reason for me to do that. But her garden was so beautiful. I said, you know what, I'm gonna add some color. So you'll see some of that. So the only thing that I did in here was took some of the weeds out. See all the spontaneous milkweed in there? It's just crazy. It's a volunteer milkweed. It's just everywhere. Um, and I added a little tiny piece of aloe in there yesterday that I broke off of the big one that I purchased. So I have not gotten, there's Rosie. I have not gotten to this butterfly garden yet this year. I will. This will be on my calendar for next week to do. I need to rake that out, amend the soil, add some more stuff. But otherwise, it's looking good. This is pretty, um, this one is pretty simple. It's a uh, native plant, so they take care of themselves. I don't have to do anything back here, really. Then over here, I had to, my herb garden, that's only um, one year old. And you can see, like, it just doesn't hold together well. My son got me that last year for Mother's Day and it's they they just don't hold together well i wouldn't recommend them so i just planted some more herbs in here the last ones that i had died i threw a marigold in there hopefully keep the pest away and there's some curly leaf uh, parsley growing and i have some italian parsley in there there's some dill and i think maybe cilantro uh, a couple more things but so i've got some sprouts in there too so we'll see how that all goes. This doesn't get a ton 
of sun either over here, but herbs usually grow pretty good without a ton of sun because they, um, they just grow like, like weeds, a lot of them do. So this is my guava. I bought this last year. This was one of my first trees that I bought and I'm sure he's a little bit bigger, but he's, he's not uh, fantastic. And actually, I think I see, oh no, that's a leaf. I was excited. I thought maybe I saw a little tiny baby on there, but um, yeah, we'll just see what happens with him. I have another one that's in the sun, so we'll see, we'll compare the two. This was a poblano pepper that I moved out of my pepper bed over here. I wanted to see how it would do in the yard, uh, not only by itself, but also to see if the dogs would you know, run it over. That's why I have all the raised beds, because of the dogs. So this is a lemon-lime hybrid. Uh, hasn't produced anything. Did get hit by the frost pretty bad, so we'll see what happens there. This is a pigeon pea, but that got hit by the frost, so I'm gonna pull that. You can see all the sweet potatoes down here. All this area that has the grass growing back, we're gonna dig this all up, all behind the bananas, and um, remulch it. I ordered new patio furniture that's coming today, so I'm gonna have a lot of cardboard boxes, a pretty large set. So I'm gonna lay that and then mulch over it and see if we can contain some of this, some of this grass or, or weeds really is what it is. Um, some more sweet potatoes in here, the sweet potato vine. I got this little log here at Tractor Supply. I thought that was really cute. I got that the other day. I have some pineapple balm. That's the first one on the left. You could take that, put it in your water. It tastes amazing. Then I have some uh, chocolate mint and that's the middle one, that's amazing. And then I have some lavender is standing up tall there, but the one that's drooping over is the lemon balm and that's not gonna do well. I plucked it from the other side. You'll see how big that is. And I stuck it in there to see if it would, if it would take, um, I kind of wanted it to branch over and then grow on the ground, but I don't, I don't think it's very happy that I pulled it. So let me come back over this way here. I missed my mango. So this is a mango that I got at the farmer's market for 10 bucks. Don't pass up your farmer's markets if you have them because a mango at the store, um, the mangoes at Home Depot were a little bit bigger than this. They're about the size of my other one down there, I'll show you. They were, I think, $65. So if you have a farmer's market, definitely check it out. This is a papaya. I came out here and just threw some seeds and that's the papaya that grew from there. This is sugar cane that got hit pretty hard from the frost, but it definitely came back. Um, this is a miracle fruit. So when you eat this fruit, you're supposed to then be able to like eat a lemon and it would taste like lemonade. It takes, ma makes everything taste really sweet. So that'll be exciting. I've never had one, but that'll be really cool when it starts to grow. I got a dragon fruit at Home Depot the other day. It was $25. And I had just come from the nursery where they were 50, same size. So I picked up two. Uh, so check out Home Depot. Lowe's didn't have anything cool like that, but Home Depot did. And it was, I was really, really excited. <laughs> so I just started getting these bins and these raised beds. They're not, they're called fire rings and they're at Tractor Supply. They were $64.99 each. And I started getting those because um, I don't have to put them together. So I wanted to see how I would like them, and I really like them. I think I'm gonna go get some more and use those from now on instead of ordering the ones mm. online because then we have to put those together. So the bananas back here are looking pretty good. These got hit pretty hard with the frost and they came back really well, especially this one on the end. There are a lot of pups growing up along the sides, so I'm gonna have to split those. Probably this Sunday we'll end up splitting them. Like I said, I was gonna wait and do the video later um, but if I do that, I'm just never, if I'm going to wait till the garden is perfect to do the tour, I'm never going to do the tour. So it is what it is. Uh, so this one here, this is a grape. And I told you guys before about this one. It's called Jacobacata, Jacobacaba. And it's a grape that grows like on the bark. It's really cool. And they use it in wines, but you can eat it right off of the bark. Uh, I can't wait till that starts producing. Another dragon fruit. Those have to go in the ground. I don't know if that's where they're going to stay. We're going to have to see because I'm afraid these other things are going to get too big and I'll have to move them. So that's a berry bush there. 
which I had last year and it produces these really, really pretty purple berries. Um, this has volunteered a couple other places in the yard, which is really cool. There's some sweet almond that I just picked up and I've been watering it since I picked it up. Um, clearly it needs some more water because it doesn't look like it's very happy. So I'm gonna have to get that one right in the ground, but I was excited to find that. I haven't seen that before. I've seen a lot of people have it in their gardens, but I haven't seen it at the nursery. So I was excited for that. Uh, there's a ton of sweet potatoes back there. Do you see them? Having the sweet potatoes back there is awesome because it keeps the weeds down but it also, um, you know, it is a dense hiding ground for snakes and I'm terrified of snakes. So this was my gold mine find at Home Depot. This was $24.99 and that is a passion fruit vine. So the nursery where I go to, there was a flower on here. Let me see if it's still here. The nursery where I go to um, is always sold out of these and they called me a few weeks ago to let me know that they had some in and asked me if I wanted one and the same size was $60. So I'm telling you, Home Depot had some amazing deals. Yeah, the, the flower closed up. So we're too early in the morning. Hopefully it'll open back up. It's a really gnarly looking flower. I really like it. So this is where you can see all the landscaping fabric here. We have to add more mulch because this is where we had the giant tree stump and we just had somebody come in and do the stump grinding on it. So we had to wait for it to settle down before you can plant anything in it because there's a lot of air. And if you start planting, your plants are gonna sink. So there's nothing that we can do with it right now. Um, so it just kind of looks like a hot mess, but <laughs> along with my tomatoes. So these are my Romas. I planted a ton of them. They are growing like crazy. I am going to come out here and start trimming. I usually don't trim my tomatoes. I just let them go. But I see some really healthy areas and then I see some areas that just are not not too happy. A couple spots on the tomatoes, which I don't I don't mind if I lose a few here or there, but I'm going to come out and clip all of these um, back and I think what I'm going to do with the suckers is I'm going to try to replant them maybe in my raised bags over there. So we can see how those take off. Um, I love propagating, I really do. I've got some green beans here and Rosie absolutely loves these. She's in here right now. I don't know if she's gonna come over here and eat it or not, but it's looking a little straggly. Rosie, let's see if she wants it. Yeah, she usually goes and just eats it off the plant herself, which I'm totally fine with. My garden, their garden. I don't mind if they're eating it. I just don't like when they trample on things, which they do when they're running and playing and things. There's another papaya that I threw some seeds right there in that area to see if they would grow. Um, here I have some eggplant. I Oh, and I threw some marigolds in there because I saw some tomato bugs on there. So I wanted to see if I could get them to stay away with the marigolds. So I've got an eggplant in there, another marigold. I just moved that pepper plant there a couple days ago um, that's jalapenos on there it's looking super sad but I have some other ones that I transplanted also that looked really sad to begin with I know you're not supposed to move them once they start fruiting but I have a ton of them I have an abundance so I was willing to experiment I love to experiment in the garden so if I lose it I lose it it's not a big deal in here I have some Swiss char and then some green bell peppers um, quite a few in there that are ready to be picked, but I'm going to give them another day or two because we're having leftovers for dinner tonight, so I don't want to pick them today. Uh, I just threw some color flowers in there, uh, some marigolds and things to add some color, like I was saying. This is a coconut palm, which was super cool to find. Uh, I am going to plant that possibly in my front yard. It's supposed to be in zone 10 but I am in zone 9B, so we'll see how it grows um, if we're still here by that time because it takes about 13 years to get uh, actual coconuts on it. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But they get to be like 75 feet tall, so I really, I can't really experiment with that one. I really have to put that one somewhere where it, it's gonna be able to thrive for all of those years and at that height. So in here, are some of the peppers that I transplanted and they were looking pretty sad too just like that other one but they're looking pretty good now they're along the back there the tomatoes are coming in over top of it see they all look like this first one here but they're okay now 
the ones in the back are okay now. So I'm glad that I separated them. I needed to give some breathing room to my pepper bed. Anyhow, I really over planted that, um, which is fine. Again, I, I don't mind experimenting. So speaking of that, we will come right over here. So my husband weed whacked for me. Uh, on Mother's Day and I forgot to tell him to do this area. He doesn't really know the difference between weeds and what my plants are because he chopped down a papaya one day. So now if I don't point it out, he doesn't he doesn't do it. So um, I forgot to tell him to do in there. So maybe this weekend I'll get him in there. So if you could see how many jalapenos I have, you'll understand why I don't care about taking some of them off and uh, pulling some of them and seeing if I could transplant them over on the other side I mean there are just so many we made jalapeno poppers I'm gonna have to and in these ones really aren't hot so that's um, good because I don't like really really hot things but I can tolerate jalapeno poppers um, and the hot pepper jam that's the reason that I planted them was because of the hot pepper jam that I made, that I make uh, but there's there are just so many of them and now I understand when I go to the farmer's market they're like eight for a dollar and I kept thinking why are they so cheap and now I understand why because you can literally grow hundreds of them like in no time at all so if you need something very easy really low maintenance definitely go with jalapenos this plant here is a persimmon and I got that one a couple months ago um, at a nursery down in St. Pete, Florida, that specializes in tropical plants. And I had never seen a persimmon before. So I grabbed that and picked it up. We do have to stake it back. It is it is leaning just a little bit there. So I wanna make sure that it go, gets staked back because it's, it's gonna be pretty big. So this looks like a hot mess, but there's a giant thing here is dill. I just cut a ton of that off because I made 28 jars of pickles last week. And I think, I think I made 28 quarts and like four pints. I don't remember, but I made a ton of pickles. So that was really nice to just come out here and get that fresh dill. Um, my Swiss char is looking a little, a little, um, done. I was going to pull it yesterday, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. I've got a lot of onions in there. I got a lot of garlic in there. It is nice to come out and just chop those tops and throw them in into some dishes. Um, but there's just so much I don't cook with. I do cook with onion a lot, but I mean, not with that much. Like there's a ton in there. So next year, I don't think I'll plant as much. I have a volunteer basil in the middle of there. Do you see that? It is actually really cool to see um, what has volunteered in my garden. It, it really is fun. There's another milkweed back there. So I put some color in there and my pigeon pea, which is this, there are two, two branches. There's one and there's the other. The pigeon peas are in full bloom right now. They are just, there's a nice butterfly going up there, a monarch. Um, they are just producing and producing and they're really cool because I'll sit at night and take the peas out of them and then and then put the peas in a mason jar and keep them and throw them with rice. My neighbors are from Jamaica so they told me how to cook them and then my exterminator who does the house service, no one sprays in the yard, he's from Dominican Republic and he told me how they make them and he is he was so excited to see them growing uh, when he came back here. He thought it was just the coolest thing. So I like to sit at night and just take them. They're not ready to be picked yet. I wait until they dry out a little bit more. Um, and I took a bunch of the seeds and replanted. So we'll see where else I just have those in starts. So we'll see where else I'm going to plant those. And Rosie's in there eating some stuff. I don't know what it is in there, but all three of my dogs go in there and eat all the time there were some black-eyed Susans in there um, they're not flowered right now but I thought maybe that's what they were liking but I don't I don't know they, uh, they all three of them like it in there this is my grapevine I don't know what kind of grapes these are it was uh, something that I bought at Home Depot last year and it just said grape and I have another one that I have over on my potting stand and it literally just says grapes. So I don't even know what kind, but you can see, I'm really excited. I mean, I think they're so cool and I don't know a lot about grapes. So I did hear somebody say in a YouTube video that they 
shouldn't be grown over an archway, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, they seem to be doing fine. They were hit with the frost really bad and I didn't think they were gonna come back at all. I thought this one was a goner because you could see down here at its base that it is, you know, it, it doesn't look good at all and the health doesn't even start to come back until here. So that's pretty far up, um, but it's done, it, it's done really great. So I know that grape vines aren't going to be you know like super super green but while they're growing they really are and i didn't think it was coming back so this is my staghorn fern i'm not sure if i showed you guys this or not those are really really cool so if you if you just google staghorn ferns you'll see how big those suckers can get and i mean they can live for like a hundred years like i've seen ones that are like 50 years old and they are just massive so check those out those are really really cool and they're like really low maintenance you can actually stick them on a tree and they'll grow on the side of the tree i don't want to do that because i don't think this is my forever home so i want to be able to take it with me it that one was definitely a hard find here's a zucchini plant i've gotten so many zucchinis from this uh, loaves of zucchini bread we have zucchini you know a couple nights a week for a side dish for dinner and I just love how big the flowers get on them there's a big one back there a really really big flower back there but I love to come out here in the day and just see everything in absolutely full bloom bear loves to eat on um, the zucchini leaves so I will take some in and chop them up and throw them in his dinner a couple nights a week uh, over here I have another eggplant. I have some more flowers that I planted, some rosemary, that's great. This is the volunteer beautyberry that I was telling you about. So from over there, from right behind Bear to over here, that volunteered itself. So it's really amazing to me when the birds and the animals and um, the, the wind, <laughs> when they move things around, it's really, really cool. This is a giant volunteer milkweed. It looks like a weed, but that is a milkweed, so I've left it alone. I wanted to see how sweet potatoes would do in the containers, so I planted some in here, just random ones I bought at Sprouts, cut the end off, cooked the rest, and threw them in here, and they seem to be doing well. I don't think I'll get a lot of production out of them just because a lot of them grew, and I didn't expect all of them to grow like that, but I will get, uh, you know, there's just not gonna be enough space in there for a ton of them but it will be interesting or maybe they'll just be a lot smaller so they're not ready yet you have to wait until the leaves really turn yellow on them and then then you can start digging but it will be cool to dig for them because i'll know whatever is in that container is all there is and back here i planted uh, some beets i think there's some celery in here i've got a lot of sprouts going on but I'm not exactly sure. I'm not always the best labeler. I'm, I always think, eh, I'll remember, and I don't remember, but that's okay. I did write a lot of stuff down in the beginning of the season, but I prefer just to come out and kind of test my knowledge. I planted a ton of sna uh, sugar snap peas yesterday because I had some in the other bed and they were amazing. Not one made it inside. I would eat them all out here in the garden with the dogs. They love them. I love them. They were great. So this is another papaya. I lost this papaya in the frost um, and it came back. It, it did not come back. I had to cut that one down. The, the stalks were hollow, but I did not replant. So whatever was left down there regrew and it looks like there are two different stalks in there. So that'll be exciting. That one's pretty pretty dense so they grow pretty fast um, and it'll give a lot of shade to this area this the sweet potatoes will like that but by the time they get big enough to provide shade the sweet potatoes will be will be gone so here's a this is a pink guava I believe this one's a pink guava that I picked up so he gets a lot of sun so we'll see how he does there's a little moringa in there that didn't like my transplant but that's all right I have a lot of moringa seeds there's a blueberry <clears throat> over here I have another blueberry I'm gonna walk you down here because down here I have this is my makeshift garden I had a lot of cinder blocks left over the woman that we bought the house from left them 
I don't know what she used them for, but they're hard to get rid of. So I just lined them up here and planted some things. And I have to tell you, like I completely neglect this area, um, but they're doing well. With the heat, having brassicas in there, they really are doing, doing well. So they're slow. But that's all right. I have a rain barrel here that I got from the county. My husband hates that it's blue, but those suckers are expensive. Um, the county gave it to me for $10. If you take the class on rainwater, um, they'll give you the bar barrel. So it's $10 for the class and the barrel. So you can't pass that up at all. This is my mulberry that <laughs> really got damaged in the frost uh, I knew it would come back because it can tolerate that that light frost like that but it came back and it is just you know a couple times the size sometimes that frost and cutting things back is really really beneficial to them so I am going to cut some of this and I think I'm going to continue it down the fence line we'll see I don't want things really hanging over the neighbor's fence I don't want them to have to deal with that but I do want to add, add some buffer. This is a low fence. I'm not sure why the sides are so low on this side. Um, I would like to have a taller fence, so I'll just put shrubbery in for now. Some things that grow nice and tall. That's a citrus. That got pretty damaged in the, in the frost too, but it's coming back pretty well. Uh, limes. I've gotten limes off of that. They're not great, so we'll see if they do a little bit better this year. This is a fig. This one got damaged too, uh, but it's doing really well, especially since George hasn't been eating it. George would come out here and eat it like crazy, and he's been leaving it alone. So I think that has a huge impact on how well it's doing, but it's uh, probably four or five times the size it was last year, so that makes me happy. This is another Barbados cherry, and this got hit pretty hard in the frost too. I do need to break off uh, some of this dead stuff, but even some of the dead stuff has growth on it. So I do need to come out here and just cut some of that dead stuff off and see. I've gotten a couple flower blooms on it so far, but no production. And prior to the frost, I got a couple rounds of cherries off of it. So that should, that should do well. This is the most blooms that I've seen on it, so that's a good sign. And over here we have some raspberries growing on the vine and then some weeds down there. This is a starfruit tree that I got at the farmer's market for $10. I lost my moringa in the frost and then I waited a couple weeks and I cut it all back thinking it would come back and it didn't. It actually was just that stick right there for quite a while. <laughs> so um, maybe two weeks ago I came out here and all of a sudden I saw new growth and there are I think five stems coming, five bases coming out of the bottom and they were all just growing and flopping over. So I tied them all up the other day. I was debating on just keeping one and letting the rest go but we'll see how it goes. I am going to have to trim it back because it is growing really fast. Moringa grows so fast and it all came back so I'm really happy about that. All right in here we have Brussels sprouts which are super cool. You can see in there on the stem the Brussels sprouts growing. They are doing really well. I know there's a lot of um, leaf destruction there but other than that I mean they really are doing well considering how hot it is they do get some shade from the banana but these <laughs> but these are huge I mean they really really are big this is where I had all the sugar snap peas uh, there's a couple left here you can see one growing here on the vine I just replanted I replanted so many of them because they're just absolutely amazing here's a blackberry and this poor thing gets knocked over constantly by the dogs and some more flowers uh, in here I have basil and there's the lemon balm that I stole from and put down there in that log that I got from tractor supply um, that's not very happy with me right now and then here's another berry I think that's a blackberry growing in there I got these from tractor supply 
the other day. And what I really like about them is you can just lay them out flat too. So you don't have to put them in the cage. They can just be flat, which is what I think I'm gonna do with my next round of tomatoes. Uh, and they were only 10 bucks, which I thought was a really good price for them, considering that if you're gonna get cattle panel or something like that to lay flat, you have to get the T-post and it just seems like a lot of work. So I thought that was a really cheap compromise. This kale has been there probably since I put this garden bed in last year. I saw somebody have a kale tree and I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So I don't use it that much. I really don't. As you can see, I don't pick a ton off of it. I don't really care for that one. It's, it's really rough. Um, it tastes like kale. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very, very green tasting. The dogs will eat it in their food. So I do chop some up and put it in their food. I planted some beets and a lot of beets. I did some cauliflower and I threw some wildflower seeds in there. So we'll see what happens. Again, another surprise. I don't think I showed you this one here. This one here, I just put some flowers in yesterday, but I also planted some beets in there. And I think there might be some carrots and celery. Carrots are hard to grow here. I've heard that, but um, I did get some small ones and they were fun. So here's another mango. I got this one at the farmer's market for 10 bucks. And um, see, we just, we just don't know how to act when mom's doing the video. <laughs> okay, dogs forgot I was standing here in the middle of their wrestling. So this mango I got at the farmer's market for 10 bucks. And these were um, anywhere from 45 to $60 at the nursery the other day. So if you have a farmer's market, check it out. Some more kale over here that's the same type of kale as that kale tree that i have over there growing so we'll see i'm not gonna let that get that big in here uh there's some scallions in there and some more sweet potatoes back there now this is really exciting i want to show you this i can't wait to show you this isn't that cool look at those bananas i've been fascinated with the bananas more than anything in this garden since I started gardening. I, there are so many bananas on this rack. I came out, I checked these bananas every single day. They got hit so hard with the frost. I wasn't sure if they were all gonna come back, they did. And I come out every single day and check. And one day there was just suddenly a flower. And I was like, where did that flower come from? It was not there yesterday. So what has been happening is every day, from this flower, one of the leaves curls up and reveals another rack. So at this rate, we have a lot more to go. Um, and uh, I think there were 10 yesterday, 10 racks on there with about 15 each. So, so far we're up to like 150 bananas. I didn't count them today, but um, I think maybe down in the comments, let's put your guess on how much that rack is going to weigh because I think I think it's going to be a big one which is going to be really exciting for my first rack of bananas. I do have one more back here that has bloomed but this one is much much smaller and you can see the space in between the racks is much bigger but that is really exciting it's probably my favorite thing in the garden is is that rack of bananas and I've heard that the squirrels and rodents and everything else will try to get to it so um, I'm gonna have to really watch and as soon as they get to size start cutting them off because I don't see rodents here um, but you know we do see squirrels we have some feral cats that live around a couple of the homes and they seem to take care of the pest control which is awesome so we'll have to uh, I have to leave some food out for those cats to thank them from keeping everything away from my bananas. So this is Seminole Pumpkin with a volunteer milkweed in there. Uh, there's a cabbage back there, if you see it, that I need to pull. I actually just saw it in there yesterday. I forgot it was even in there, but the Seminole Pumpkin is growing like crazy. There are little pumpkins here, you can see, and it flowers like zucchini does. You'll see the big yellow flowers. I don't know if you could see that in there, but it flowers really big. During the day, it has really vined out. It even traveled over there into that banana plant, which is fine. 
Um, and then there's a lot of sweet potatoes back there and then it even vined out back there. So if you have any recipes for Seminole pumpkins, let me know because I've never had it before. I know that they're easy to grow here. So that's why I threw it in there to see, I wasn't gonna put anything else in that bed. So I threw it in there to see what would happen and uh, that's what's happened so far. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's some more Brussels sprouts. They're not doing as well. I might pull those. I've got a basil here that decided it would just fall over. It got extremely woody and they usually get woody when they get a lot bigger. Um, so he got woody pretty fast and it was too much weight and he fell over. So I've just been clipping them. Hopefully he'll, he'll grow to the sides a little bit and fill himself out a little bit more. I threw some marigolds in there yesterday and that big dense pile of sweet potatoes, that is gonna be so much fun, so much fun to dig those up. And I've got some more Brussels sprouts in there. Uh, I did plant some more snap peas in there, but they uh, have not come up yet. I saw one came up a little bit and then died off. So we, we might have had our run in those beds for the snap peas. So we'll see if they grow over in the, air, the other area. This is a pineapple guava that's right here behind the Rosie. That hasn't done a whole lot since I bought it either. So we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully that will do a little bloom for us and this right here is an olive tree that will that has some growth on it and that one is another beauty berry which is the same as that one over there and the volunteer over there so thank you so much for tuning in and to see bear george his name is bear but we call him george and rosie and we hope you like our new addition and our gardening and check us out again i will be back to show you guys uh, more about the bananas and what else we got going on here all right thanks happy gardening bye